What's going on you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here and welcome to The Casual Nerd. Now with there a lot going on in the world right now, like I've said before on my Twitter, on here even, in a live stream I did yesterday, I want to be your guys' escape. I want to be, you know, for Markiplier, for Jacksepticeye, for I Has Cupquake, for, your, for PewDiePie, you know, we can all be your escape for the thousands of other gaming content creators out there right now. We are your escape. You guys can lean on us. We can be the shoulder that you can cry on, if that makes sense. So I want you guys to just honestly remember that, hey, we're here spreading the word about petitions, about, you know, charities, about fundraisers, about anything and everything you guys can do to help with the Black Lives Matter movement. But also we're here to say, hey, come on, let's chill, let's hang out for a little bit and let's just escape the world for, you know, whether it be half an hour to two hours, however long you need a break for. So what we're going to do first, per usual, is we're going to review a trailer. And the trailer that we're reviewing is Terraria Journeys End. I'm pretty sure I said that name right, but let me know down in the comments below if I didn't. Um, I mean, you guys let me know that I pronounced Senua wrong. So many of you said I pronounced Senua wrong. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Listen, I'm sorry, okay? At first I said sauna, okay? It wasn't sauna. She's not a sauna. I get this. Okay, moving on. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's bring home the bacon. Even though I can't stand bacon. Let's bring home the kale. Yes, let's bring home the kale. I like that better. Ooh, yes, a t-shirt. Yes, honey. Oh, it has like Pokemon style music. I like that. Remember like from the Game Boy? <laughs> Terraria. Journey's end. End, end, end. Oh. Oh, it's a cute platformer game. Oh wow, the characters look really tiny. Can we just say that this music is bomb? Like this music is bomb. It's so good. I love it. This reminds me of like old school Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance style type stuff. I I love it. I'm living for it. Oh, you can customize your character. That's adorable. This looks really cool. This looks really cool. It kind of looks like a 2D platformer style type ver version of Minecraft to a degree. I can see why people would find this so appealing. You can have different things that you can craft. You can have different places that you can go. Even the hearts, they don't look like Minecraft, but they look kind of similar to what Minecraft is, like the little heart structured things. That's actually pretty cool. Very interesting mechanics. I like that. I love the graphics, the way they're done very simplistically, kind of pixel art-esque in a way, if you will. That's pretty, really cool. Astro mode. Master, oh, wow. That's, is that a snake? You're just happy to see me. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. That looks like Sithaloo. S Sithaloo? Am I pronouncing that right? The Call of Sithaloo? <laughs> this just reminds me of that for some reason. I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> this is adorable. Oh, this is so wholesome. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. This is just... That's... No. That's like... Honestly... Honestly, this is, this is the only thing I think a lot of people might have an issue with. They were flying a kite bunny and a kite lizard alligator thing. PETA is going to be alarmed and they're not going to be very happy about this update. Says so that kite but that's a kite bunny. That is definitely a kite bunny. That is definitely a kite bunny. Oh, coming 2019? Oh, it was out last year. Okay, all right, very interesting. I like that. I know a lot of people are playing that game as of right now. Oh, look, PewDiePie. There are a lot of people who are playing ter uh, Terraria, Terraria, Terraria. Oh, I'm really gonna mess up this name. A lot of people are replaying it right now. It's a very popular game. I don't know if I'm going to get into it just yet because I feel like that's more of a game that I would just play on my own to chill and relax. But any game that I either get my hands on or is given to me, I feel like has to go on the channel. So if I do end up playing at some point, I might do a walkthrough or it might be live on Twitch. But that was a good trailer. I would give that like a, a nine out of 10. So yeah, I enjoyed the trailer. Let's move on to some Ghost of Tsushima news. So Ghost of Tsushima's Jin is the only playable character 
within the game. That Jin is the hero of the story, Fox said. Players are there each step of the way, guiding Jin as he transforms from the honorable samurai he was brought up to be into the ghost that Tsushima needs him to become. He continues on in saying that though you can customize Jin's armor to fight as either a confrontational samurai or a stealthy ghost, which I love that option. That is really, really cool and very unique. You don't see too many games do this. Jin's weapon of choice won't change. Jin's katana is incredibly important to him, Connell said. It's also his main weapon of choice from beginning to the end of the game. There are ways to improve the weapon, both his stats and the appearance. It also states here that Jin's story can't be altered either, which means to me, as the reader and as the viewer, that there are no multiple endings. It goes into saying that there's no karma system, Fox said. There's one story we're telling here, one story for Jin. In regards to how long the story will take to complete, Fox said, that's an impossible question to answer for an open world game, but went on to say that the player should expect a scope that it's markedly larger than the previous work. For me, honestly, this is shaping up to be bigger than Red Dead Redemption 2. If you really think about it, the amount of possibilities. You have endless amounts of possibilities within this one story structure. That's what I'm kind of caught off guard about is the fact that it's one structure. It's one story, one playable character. Really excited to see what comes out of the Ghost of Tsushima. I'm really excited to again, like I said, get my hands on a PS5 so I can play said Ghost of Tsushima because I absolutely love open world games. I think they're absolutely fascinating and just an incredible piece of art that needs to be just cherished and loved and respected because an open world is not an easy thing to create. So a lot of you guys were actually arguing, like really heavily arguing about the fact that PS5 delayed their event, which I kind of, I kind of predicted. The thing is, is that I, I talked about this last Friday. I mean, you know, there, there are a lot of people who were speculating the fact that PS5 would actually cancel the event. And you know what? I'm glad they did. It states here in the article that PlayStation have confirmed their intentions to reveal a new date for the PS5 Future of Gaming event soon. Soon in quotes. After the digital showcase was postponed in response to the Black Lives Matter protests taking place across the globe. Soon could of course imply anything from a matter of days to a matter of weeks, but given that Sony's next-gen console is set to release within the next six months, I'd imagine that PlayStation is eager to reveal its state of upcoming PS5 games as we are ready to hear about them. Meanwhile, you have Xbox with their live that's going to be coming out next month. Now, I don't I don't know. I, I don't see Xbox parading around with different dates. I don't know about you guys, but I, I don't I don't really see that. Do you? But again, much like COVID, much like the Black Lives Matter movement, I'm glad that companies are taking responsibility and owning up to the fact that, hey, there are more important voices that need to be heard. There are things that are more important that need to be attended to right now. I'm saying it's one of the smartest decisions that they have ever done as a company on their part because companies are prioritizing the human being over the game. Gaming is not the most important thing. It is a luxury item, okay? You need to be able to survive as a human before you can survive as a gamer, if that makes sense, okay? So Twitch removes the Twitch cop emote. I am very intrigued and very happy about this. Twitch has been, Twitch has been on their game lately. Like I'm just so happy to be a part of a like a company as as a streamer. I don't work at Twitch. Just FYI, I thought that might probably confuse some people. I don't work at Twitch. <laughs> I am a streamer on Twitch, and it's so cool to see the fact that even the smallest things might qu make people question, you know? So it, it states here in the article that Twitch Cop is a global emo that according to The Verge was added to the platform following a fan vote in 2017. It was quietly removed from the platform yesterday, a move that Twitch was said to prevent misuse, which I agree with. People are going to probably misuse that. You know, trolls and their banter are going to misuse it, is that with a lot of this, you might be a person at home thinking that, oh, I would, ne I would never misuse, I would never misuse that Twitch cop. No, it's just all fun and games. But with the current climate and the current uh, situation that the world is in right now, I'm very happy that Twitch, a lot of other companies, like I've stated, are taking the necessary measures in order to provide not just a safe zone, but a healthier way of thinking. Now, also speaking of the Black Lives Matter movement, GTA Online and Red Dead Online will temporarily go offline in honor of George Floyd, which I think is beautiful. 
Now, it states here in the tweet that Rockstar Games posted, Black Lives Matter, to honor the legacy of George Floyd today, 6-4-20, from 2 to 4 p.m. ET, we will be shutting down access to our online games, Grand Theft Auto Online and Red Dead Online. Now, granted that this happened yesterday, I get that, but I'm just very proud of the company and the fact that they're taking initiative like every other company is. Now, lastly, in gaming news today, we have for you Sega. Sega. I remember that name. Gosh, it's a lovely name to hear again. Sega is making Game Gear Micro. Little tiny, little tiny game things. You know, to an extent, this kind of reminds me of Tamagotchi, like a, a cooler, uh, more extended version of Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi actually looks like this. Sega is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year with another retro console, and it looks like it might be the tiniest yet and the smallest and most wholesome looking one yet. Game Gear Micro is a revival of the Sega's 8-bit handheld system that tried and failed to overcome Nintendo's Game Boy. Now, the console is going to be sold in four different colors, black, blue, yellow, and red. It's going to release on October 6th of this year. I'm really considering getting it actually just as like a throwback thing. And it'll be 4,980 yen, which is about roughly $50. But you guys, that is it for me for the casual nerd. If y'all like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe, hit that bell down below, and make sure you check out the links down below. I will have links to all the articles that were talked about today and where you guys can sign petitions and donate if you can and watch videos if you can't donate to the Black Lives Matter movement. But stay casually nerdy, you guys, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.